Thank you, Mayor. You know, I would say to uh, my colleague sitting two seats to my right is that it, it, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, from time to time, there are, are dollars available that are only uh, permitted to be spent in, in certain uh, settings and certain type of use, and this is one of those uh, situations where uh, we, we can take advantage of the, some of the, the federal dollars that are out there and, and do some match with local monies and try to do some good in the community or do a complete bypass on, on all of those particular opportunities. You know, the 300000 specific that you mentioned about what it's going to be spent on, you know, I can tell you my preference is to take the 300000 and, and a whole chunk of money and spend it on helping develop our boys and girls and summon out the school programs. Uh, in that, we have to have the complete healthy state of the child. And we, we have to, uh, I think, more so acknowledge the important nexus between our youth activities today and the success of Houston tomorrow. And I think we're doing more and more in the right direction, moving more of the resources from what I would consider almost an exclusive enforcement and interdiction strategy to looking at prevention and education. And that also includes dealing with the health issues also. Uh, Dr. Christie, we have to look at that as well. And I appreciate our, your comments and when we uh, talk about how we're spending the taxpayers' dollars, whether they are local dollars, state dollars, or federal dollars, you know, I, I want to get on that bandwagon because I, I, I do think that uh, we need to be more mindful of how we spend the dollars that we have as opposed to trying to come up with ways to go garner more dollars in the way of fees, taxes, and permit requirements are from the citizens. And many times I've seen, item 15 was one that I, I read through a second time as well, about what does some of this mean and why are the dollars being spent this way. But again, when, when the dollars are earmarked, from the federal government that they are dispersing the dollars to be spent in this particular fashion if you want to match. Our choice is to match and get some benefit for the community or pass all together and get no benefit for the community. And I think this was a good decision to match and take advantage of the dollars, at least to some extent, which benefits the community. <coughs> Having said that, I want to go back to what Councilmember uh, Davis said earlier about uh, you know, beating the hammer, being the advocate, and this should be. Uh, your, your, your commentary, in my view, uh, rang loud and has a lot of truth. We have to do more uh, in this to be, uh, no doubt about that. As you said, Councilman McGowan uh, sat around this table and, and, and exemplified leadership, pushed hard, 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 and was successful in a lot of ways trying to uh, bring resources to a part of Houston that uh, oftentimes uh, is neglected. Uh, I thank you for your comment. And, and don't think for one minute that I'm not in agreement with what you were saying today about changing some of the processes and the way the goals are met. But I don't want to just look at, you know, whether the goal is met. I want to move to prime status. And, you know, it's not just getting a goal of 10% or 12%. Let's look at the, the overall big contract and see if we can get some of those awarded to people in District B as well and know that you have my full support in trying to drive things through and make opportunities for employment and development happen uh, in District B. And I appreciate your leadership in expressing your comments on the issues. Thank you, Mayor. Council Member Thank you, Mayor. I look forward to uh, welcoming and inviting uh, all residents of District J.